So in this tutorial I'm just going to quickly show you how to make this simple vote badge. Pretty easy to do, basic stuff. Really good if you're a beginner into Illustrator. You'll cover some pretty basic fundamentals of making stuff in Illustrator. So yeah, let's get to it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is open up a new document, which is... Uh, uh, just choose one that's 480 pixels by uh, 640. Once you've got that open, we're going to um, throw down some guides just into the center of the page so we get a nice crisscross thing which we can align all our um, parts to this badge that we're making. So what you want to do is just drag out a couple of guides and just roughly put them down. Now to do the next step, you're going to make sure that your guides are, are not locked. If you have a tick next to here, that means your guides are locked and you're not going to be able to change their position. So just make sure you untick that and then you just select your guide that you want to change position and we want to put this in the middle of the page so obviously our width here or our x value is uh, 640 so we want this to be 320 and now put that guide in the center and we'll do the same here as well for this one so that one's the y value will be 480 so we just divide that in two and it'll give us 240 and now our guides are exactly in the center so now we can come back to our guide option under view and just hit lock so those guides can't be moved anymore. So next off we're going to want to draw our circle, our base element for this badge. Um, for this I'm just going to choose some colors for our uh, fill and stroke. So we'll just come up to our swatches here and we'll just hit the white for our fill and just move over to the swatch. I'm going to use a blue which I've pre-chosen. You can use whatever colors you want for this. Obviously blue and red are going to be more fitting for your typical vote badge but you can choose whatever you want. Alright so now we have our fill and our stroke selected we can come over to our object tool here and we'll just select the ellipse and we'll just come into the center. Don't worry about being exactly in the center because we'll align this later but you just hold your alt and your shift button and just draw a circle out and it should look like that. Now get your pointer tool and just click on that and make sure that these values are both exactly 320 and 240 the ones we set earlier so we can just slap those like that and your circle will be exactly in the center. Now I'm going to want to make the stroke on this circle a bit bigger because obviously it's not big enough. So we'll just come over to our stroke dialog box here. You can find all the dialog boxes under the um, window option here. Anything you're missing just put a tick next to it and it'll bring it up on the side. So I'm going to bring my weight up to about, I'll try three. Yep, three looks good. So there, we have our base circle all ready to go. Alright, so now just using your pointer tool, we're going to select the circle here and we're going to copy it by pressing Ctrl C and now we're going to paste it in place or right over the top of this one by pressing Ctrl F. And it should just stick an exact copy exactly on top of the previous circle. Now holding your Alt and Shift, we're just going to shrink the circle in a little bit. Like so. Just using your pointer tool, we can do that. Just so you've got a nice little gap there. Now I'm. Um, now I'm going to swap the full colors around with the stroke and turn off the stroke. So we can do this by clicking this arrow and obviously that changes this, the white and the blue around so now it's got a white stroke with a blue fill. But I don't want the stroke here so I'm just going to make sure the stroke's pointing forward. You can just do that by clicking on either either and then we're just going to click this little strike outline that turns off the stroke. Alright so now we're going to want to cut the circle in half. Now to do this we're going to draw a square over the top of the circle here and using our Pathfinder um, toolbox we're going to split these two in half so we can add a different color to both the top and bottom. Um, so first off just select your um, rectangle tool here and just come down to your color and just make sure that the fill is set to white. Well it can be set to anything, it doesn't really matter but we'll choose grey for now just so we can see what's going on. And we'll just draw a box roughly over the center, like so. And um, we're just going to want to center that box. Don't worry about centering it this way, we just want to center it via the Y value. So we'll just make sure that it's sitting on 240, so it's bang in the middle. So that way we get an even semicircle both top and bottom. Now come up to your pointer tool and holding shift, the um, the box should be still selected but if it isn't just click that while holding shift and then click the circle in the background so you should have both boxes selected 
And now we want to bring up our Pathfinder dialog box. Again, if you don't have this, just go up into your window and try and find window option up in the top menu here and just try and find the Pathfinder option in here. Now, um, for this one, we're going to want to use this shape mode here, this little black box or white box. I think it's called Subtract. Now, if we just pick, if we just hit this, it's going to do what we want, but it's going to leave all these dirty little marks, um, little uh, paths around here. They're invisible and you can't see them, but you can still they're still there. So if you're doing stuff like lino printing, this is obviously going to cause a problem. So it's a good habit to try and get rid of these. I'm going to show you a little trick to um, to do this real quick using the same options there. So we just Control Z that, making sure both are selected. If we come up and we hold Alt and then click that it expands the object at the same time as subtracting it. So we get a nice clean two shapes like so. Alright so now you're going to notice that these two semicircles are actually stuck together. We want to make them two individual things. Now when you do that subtract mode in Pathfinder it automatically groups the two items together. Uh, you can ungroup them by pressing Control, Shift and G. And doing that you should be able to select the individual semicircles. Now um, next we're going to want to colour the bottom semicircle a different colour so we start heading more to our final product. So we just select the bottom one and you can choose a red or any colour you want. So it's kind of looking like a Pepsi logo at the moment. That's okay. Alright so now we're going to put in our little white stripes here to make it more like more look like the American flag. Um, to do this we're just simply going to get our rectangle tool again and we'll just draw out some rectangles down here for the time being. Now just draw out one for now and just making so we can make sure that they're all the stripes are the same size. What we'll do is we'll copy that by pressing Control C and we'll paste it in place by pressing Control F. And then just using your arrow key on your keyboard just move the shape over. Don't worry about getting them spaced out exactly evening exactly even. I'll show you how to get them all even after that but just continue to do that so we get out a few shapes. Enough to cover that red area in the circle. Like so. Now if we select them all and then come up to the top here and we can click this align to center. You see this little shape thing here and we'll click that. What they'll do is they'll make sure that the gap between each one of them is exactly the same. And the next step we want to do is to group them. So we can just press Ctrl G and then we can just move them up and put them over our shape like so. Now we want to center all these so that we get nice even spacing on either size. So again we can just come up and make sure that our, our Y, our X value here is 320. Yeah like so. And that should center it. Cool. So now we're going to want to subtract these stripes from this bottom semicircle. So to do that, all we're going to do is select our grouped stripes here, and then holding shift, select the semicircle below it. And then we'll come up and again holding alt, hit the subtract option up in Pathfinder. Like so, and voila, we've got our stripes. Now I'm not really too happy with how that came out because we're obviously missing quite a big gap here of the red, and it kind of looks a bit funny. So we're just going to undo that by pressing Control Z until we get our stripes back and then just holding the Alt key we'll just shrink those in a little so oh, make sure you deselect the semicircle first and just holding the Alt key shrink those in a little bit so a little bit of the semicircle is poking out either side that way it won't look so funny and then again holding the Shift key select the semicircle come up and hold the Alt key and hit the Subtract button again there we go it looks a bit better you still get it kind of represents the um, semicircle a bit more. Okay, so now we're going to want to get some stars up in this top blue bit. Uh, we can do that simply by coming up to our object tool, drop down, just click and holding, and come down to our star tool. Now, if you just click on the spot, it should bring up a little dialog box. If you just click once, um, keep the values the same as this, and make sure obviously to have a star, you want to have five points, and then just hit OK. That should make us a nice little star. Now just holding shift will rotate the star around a little bit so we get the star up. Try and there you go. Just rotate it around until you get it upright. And we can shrink it down a bit. Like so. Probably about that big. 
Now, obviously being an American styled vote veg, we don't want red stars. So we'll come up and we'll just make the stars white. So, cool. And we'll just copy some by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl F, and again, spacing them out like so. And just keep doing that until we get about four stars that run across. Now, holding Shift, select all your stars, and then again, come up to align to centers and hit that, and I'll space them out nice and evenly across that top part. Now I'm going to throw in about three more stars up top, so we'll just press Ctrl V because those stars should be still sitting in spot, and we'll just do that again. There you go. Select them all, and we'll just make sure that they're all horizontally aligned and again we'll do the space to center like so there you go it should be all nice and aligned now kind of thinking because there's a bit of a gap up here we should make this middle star a bit bigger so holding alt and shift we'll just bring them out a bit like so and just using the arrow keys we'll line them up like that there we go that's looking a bit better okay so we're almost done now our final step is obviously to get some words in here. I don't know if you want to put a date in or just simply vote, but whatever you want, you can just put it in. Uh, to put text in, easy peasy, just hit the text tool and we'll choose a font. I'm a big fan of Myriad Pro, uh, bold italic, mainly because uh, it looks pretty retro, so and I'm a big fan of retro stuff. And we'll just click in or we'll write anything. I'm just going to write vote. You can put a date, 2012 if you want, anything. Um, obviously that's a bit small, so we'll just select that a pointer tool and we'll just bring the size up probably about, let's see if that fits in there nicely yeah, about 36 will do obviously we'll make it blue as well because that'll make it look a bit nicer and matchy matchy now again, with our um, clicking on our pointer tool, we'll try and align it exactly centers so again we want to put out our 320 and our 240 values into the x and y's and that should center up nice and good um yeah the vertical alignment's a bit off so obviously the line height on that is a bit a bit weird so we can just drop it down and just visually align it like so see that looks a bit better so there you have it all done and finished um, if you want to be really fancy, you can subtract all the stars from this top semicircle. It's probably not necessary, but you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, you could also convert this text to outlines just to make it a bit more compatible with printing and that sort of stuff. But most printers should have Myriad Pro, so you should be alright. So, yeah, I hope this tutorial is helpful. And um, if so, feel free to hit the like button below, that always helps. And uh, if you want to see more tutorials, please subscribe. I'm always making more of these. And yeah, have a nice day.